Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome to Intentional Productivity Tips. I am your very favorite strategic productivity partner, Megan, and I am so glad to be with you today. Today you are watching me on USA Global Radio and TV, and you are able to watch and join, like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. You can also like and subscribe on Dr. Jacqueline, um, Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck's YouTube channel and also our website. Let's talk about today's show. So we are in the middle of a Productivity Boost Core 4 series where we are looking at productivity four core areas and looking at your productivity habits. Today, we're specifically going to look at time management and calendar preferences. I have a presentation that I'm going to share right now. Just sharing that with you right now. And then we'll go through and we'll talk about today. Again, specifically, we're going to talk about habit two, calendaring and time management. I don't know about you. I will be honest. When I start and bring up the topic of calendaring to people, they sometimes get a lot of different emotions, a lot of different responses. Because people talk about, and there's a lot of different thoughts, and there's a lot of different emotions that go with calendars and and our time management. So today we're going to talk about productivity basics for your calendaring preferences and time management. As I mentioned, this is part of a productivity boost series. Today we're in week two, we're talking about calendaring and time management. Next week, we're going to talk about tracking and update productivities. And then in two weeks, we will talk about a tools review. In case you missed us last week, we did talk about a daily checklist process. If you didn't see it and you're interested, please go back and look on USA Global TV, YouTube, and you'll be able to find it. Today's episode, as I mentioned, we are going to talk about identifying your calendaring base, your calendaring and time management basics. When we think about productivity, it's about our actions. It's about our resources and it's about our habits a lot of times. 
when we're talking about calendaring, it's about our actions, it's about our resources, and it's about our re and it's about um, what assets we're using. So today we're going to go through our bas basics. We're going to look at why we want to think about time management, why we want to think about calendaring preferences, what should they be, who, when, why, how, how much. We're going to get into the basics. Then we're going to talk about your specific productivity personalized preferences for your calendaring moving forward. And then this week's productivity quick tip is introducing a capture list. So I'm excited to get started with that for you. Let's get started again with our calendaring and time management basics. When we're starting with our basics, well, the very first place we want to start is why. But, but why do we want to think about our time management and calendaring tips? When I very first start talking with my clients many times, they're like, okay, we're going to talk about calendaring. They get out their calendar. They're ready to go. And that makes sense. Except it's me. You know, we're going to talk a lot, a little bit more besides just the action. Again, this is called intentional productivity tips. So we want to be intentional with our calendaring and time management moving forward. We want to say, what is our why? When we're talking about our calendaring basics, we want to figure out our why. Why do we use our calendar? What do we want our calendar to do for us? What works for you? And most important, what how much effort are you willing to put into your calendaring system? When it comes to figuring out our calendaring why, there's some questions we want to be able to describe for ourselves. Why is it that we want to do it? I've had clients that have told me my why for my calendar is just to tell me when I need to be somewhere. I don't care about anything else. Just tell me when I need to be somewhere. I've had clients that say, I want to use my calendar to be able to tell me when I'm going to do something. I want to put tasks and assign times. I've had clients that have told me, I want my calendar just to tell me when big events are. So there's a lot of different options. Again, it comes back to our why and how much time, effort, and energy we're willing to spend on being intentional with our calendaring basics. Why is it so important? Statistically, there's also a little bit of proof. Using the correct organizational tools can improve time management by 38%. So if we're intentional with our tools and if we look at our calendaring habits, we're actually going to be more productive. Our calendar adds structure to our time. If we have a week calendar, that's a W-E-A-K, week calendar, then we are going to have a week, week as well. It's important that we're aware of our why and what it is that we want to accomplish with our calendar, how it's going to be in our life, what our calendar role is going to play for us. I know that sounds a little deep and you might be saying, okay, Megan, but it goes back to how much effort and energy are you willing and do you want to put into your calendar and your calendar habits? So we've got the why. Let's look about the where. I'm going to tell you this is where I get just a little bit giddy. I have loved calendars for a very, very long time in my life. In fact, for more of my life than not of my life, I have loved calendars. So for me, when we start talking about our calendars and our where, I again get a little bit of giddy because we want to identify what are our calendar locations. We can have a lot of calendars or not in our life. We know that there are some specific types of calendars. We know there are physical calendars. I started with my physical physical calendar, still love a physical calendar. There's electronic calendars. And then we also can have journals. I'll be honest with you. Currently, I use my electronic calendar for all my planning and work and things like that. But then I use my physical calendar for my calendar journal. So it's identifying our calendar types and then just deciding on a purpose for our calendar. You can have more than one calendar. For example, you might have a family calendar. You might have a calendar in your laundry room that has birthdays on it. Maybe there's a school calendar. Maybe there's a work calendar or a shift calendar. You want to think about where is it that you have all of your calendar options and all of your calendar information. Because again, you can have more than one as long as you know the purpose of them. Then what you want to do is you want to identify one master plan, one master planning calendar. What I mean by that is you want to identify one master planning calendar that you're going to go to whenever you need to put an appointment, whenever you have something scheduled. If you want a reminder, you want to have one planning calendar. Why do we say this? Especially in the electronic world, we know we might have a calendar. We might have four or five calendars. So the goal of, of identifying one place where we have a master calendar 
when at all possible is going to help you to be able to take control of looking at one place. We've all had the situation where I've got my availability on my work calendar, and then I've got my personal calendar, and I schedule maybe a day at the day spa, and then I get a notification that someone is scheduled on my calendar for work because I didn't connect the two. As much as possible, again, if we're looking for things, we want a one master calendar. We want to add action. So like I said, if you've got a birthday calendar, if you've got a calendar, you know, your office, those are all great. You can still have those. But your master calendar is where we want to have all those um, actions. So again, you're looking at one place. Another you want to, place you want to think about, especially in our electronic, our electronic world, where do you access your calendar? You can access it on your watch, on your phone, on a tablet or iPad, on a laptop, on a PC, on your TV. When you think about it, we have a lot of places that we can access our calendar, and it's okay to be able to look at them in multiple places. But we want to, again, think about where is it that we access that we want to set notifications up for? Where is it that, again, we're going to look at the most time so we know that that's going to be our source of truth for our calendar? That's, again, where your notifications are going to be sent. So we've talked a little bit about why. We now know where you're going to keep your calendar. Is it going to be physical or is it going to be electronic? And how are you going to have as much information on there as possible? So the next question is who? The next question is who we want. Oops, excuse me. Thinking a little bit more about calendar location preferences. One of the things we want to identify is that according to a study by the American Psychological Association, 87% of people who use a calendar system that aligns with their personal preferences, whether it's electronic, paper, or planner, report higher levels of productivity and reduced stress comparing to those using a system that doesn't match their preference. In short, 87% of people who identify their specific calendar preference, whether it be paper or electronic or paper, are going to be higher and report being more productive. Having a clear where and a clear place we keep our calendar is going to help us to be, again, more productive. Why do I keep bringing these examples up? Is to show if we're intentional with our productivity, we're going to be able to be more productive. If we're intentional with our calendar, we're going to be able to have more control over our time. The next thing we want to look at, I started to bring this up a few minutes ago, is the who. A lot of times people might say, what do you mean who when it comes to your calendar? What I mean is your calendar access and control. Again, we live in an electronic world, so one of the great things is we can give access of our calendars, whether it be a specific calendar, whether it be our entire um, our entire systems, whether it be a, a calendar that we create, any of those calendars that we have, if they're electronic, we can give access to other people, maybe a family member, maybe a spouse, maybe an employee, maybe a team member or a coworker. Again, we can create calendar views that we can provide other people access to so they can get an idea of where we are and they don't have to contact us, right? One of the great things that I have seen with a lot of, with a lot of clients, if you have a calendar and you give access to your administrative assistant, coworker, or whoever, they're able to look at your calendar and they're able to make schedules and they're able to look and see what your schedule is rather than calling and asking you. So there's definitely some, be some benefits. When we're talking about the who, one thing I would like to mention, it's always important to go back and look and see who currently has access to your calendars. So for example, if you're in a Google Calendar or a Microsoft Calendar, you can go back and look and see who has access and you can audit and either give access or revoke access as needed. It's important when you're thinking of who with your calendar details is to think who is invited to appointments or time blocks. Who else do you want to have be a part of them? Again, when we're looking at our calendar, we're looking at how we're spending our time. So the who allows us to be able to communicate to who we want about how we're spending that time. Now, there's one last thing I want to bring up with the who, and that is who controls your calendar. Quite frankly, who owns your calendar? So for example, again, if you're in a Google calendar, who has the domain? Are you using a calendar that's a work calendar or maybe that somebody else owns? The reason I'm bringing this up is 
who has access to your calendar is very important when it comes to they can give you access and they can take your access. So it's important that we know when it comes to our calendar, we're going to keep access to it. There's been times when people have been terminated or when people remove act, when people cut somebody out of an account and you lose all of your calendar information. So it's important that you make sure you know who you trust who, and if not, that you know that you'll be able to get a backup or that you'll be able to talk to them so that you don't lose your calendar access by your choice. So we've talked about who, we've talked about where, and we've talked about why. So when it comes to improving your calendar basics, how are you going to do it specifically? What are some of the specific things that we're going to do? Guarding our calendar logistics is not just about managing time. It's about safeguarding your most valuable asset, your productivity. Our calendars do help us safeguard our most valuable asset, and it helps us to be able to safeguard our productivity if we take the time and say how we're going to do that. So the question is, how can your calendar make your life easier? I've got a couple suggestions. One thing I recommend thinking again about Google Calendar or I could think about any of them, look at the calendaring settings and look at the things you can set up in your settings. For example, you can add buffer time. You could limit the number of meetings. You can, you can identify your start and stop times. When you look at your calendar settings, there's a rich detail of information. So you can say, okay, this is how I want my calendar and schedule to be. Add automations when possible. Either it's tasks you can automate within your calendaring system, sync it to an app, for example, maybe to Monday, sync your, sync your calendar to the apps and the tools that are important in your daily life. So you're able to, again, you're making your life work easier for you because when things are connected, you only have to look in one place. You don't have to log into three or four places. So being able to automate things. Again, what is the next task? This is automatically going to send a reminder. It's automatically going to send, um, if, if it's, if the meeting was canceled, it's automatically going to send a reschedule. Um, it's important again, to think about some of those, when you get into the settings and the nitty gritties, you really can make your life calendar life easier by spending time. I don't want to alarm you because I know you might be thinking this is a lot, Megan. And it is, let's be honest. But remember, the title of this show is Intentional Productivity Tips. So I'm here to get you to start thinking about it, not just to start, but to continue to think about what are some of the things you can do? What are some of the actions or habits you can build, right? When we think about intentional productivity, we think it's taking control of your habits, your actions, your automations, your processes, and your mindset. Another great way to make your calendar life easier is to create and use scheduling links. So what this means is there's a lot of tools out there, Calendly, Acuity, um, Zoom scheduling. There's a lot of tools that have scheduling links where you can set up and create a, a scheduling link where you can say, I, these are the times, this is the availability. You've got a link, you can send it to somebody, right? We all love scheduling links when someone sends them to us. So I would recommend if you know, for example, one of my clients um, knew that he wanted to do networking, he wanted to do two networking sessions a week. But it was a little hard to take control of at the beginning. So what he did is he set up a create. He created um, two networking event schedules on his calendar. Uh, it was Tuesdays and Thursdays, and he had a scheduling link. And whenever somebody said, "Hey, let's schedule to get together," he would send that to them. We can send scheduling links for networking events, for appointments. Thinking of scheduling links as saying, "I intentionally know I want to be able to block this time off and schedule this time." A bonus. One of my clients taught me this as well. If you've got a scheduling link, a bonus tip, add a signature in your email. Add an auto signature that's called scheduling link and add the link in there. That way, when you want to respond with the scheduling link, you just have to respond with your email signature. Again, small tip to help. We know with your calendar, you can make your calendar easier by looking at your views, by looking at the filters of what you've got look on your page. Is it looking at a week? Is it looking at all my calendars? What are the reminders that are you're getting? What are the reminders, for example, 
this morning I got an email from Amazon. Hey, do you want this subscription order or not? So I thought, oh, that's something I should put on my calendar. I know every month about the 11th, I'm going to get a reminder from Amazon if I want to purchase this project or a product. Taking control of repeating tasks also. If you know that you're going to continually have things like, I know I'm going to have um, birthdays, we know anniversaries, we know events or repeating tasks. Again, if you put them on your calendar and you repeat them, you don't have to add them. This is one of the reasons I actually do like electronic calendars over paper calendars. For those of you who use paper calendars, do you remember when we used to, at the beginning of the year, you used to have to break out the calendar and the pens and, the, and rewrite everything? We don't have to do that now. We can create reminders. We can create repeating tasks and automations that will help us. How can we make our lives a little bit easier? Some suggestions and some tips here, things that you can think of. The next part is how much detail do we want to add? We've already talked about a lot, but I'm specifically talking about when you schedule an event, how much detail you want to add. I will be honest with you, when it comes to details and calendars, I fall in the category of extra, extra. I am going to go extra with the details I provide. This is my choice. You don't have to do that. It's up to you. It's about finding the tools that are working for you. Take time to find what details and information that is most useful for you to add to your calendar entries. No outside suggestions or opinions are needed. This is, again, a place, your calendar, all about you. Some of the details you can add include, I am a huge fan. To me, I love when I open up my calendar and it's a party for my eyes. There's different colors that show me different things that I'm doing. One recommendation for your calendar details is to add colors to your appointments and to your time blocks because you're able to, again, it's a party for your eyes. By looking at it, it's a very easy glance to be able to identify, oh, look, I've got a lot of green, which is work. Good. Oh, I've got a lot of gray, which is not doing anything. Maybe not good. It gives you just a quick observation and overview to see what's going on. Title details can also be important. I like to think about it as when I'm looking at a count, when I look at the entry of my calendar item and my task item on my calendar, I want to be able to remember and know what it is. I think about it, especially when I'm flying. For example, again, extra, extra, when I'm flying, and this kind of gives me my mindset for all of my calendar detail entries, I put what my, the, the flight number, the time it's leaving, the confirmation number, all on the time of my, when I'm adding it in my calendar entry. Again, title details are for us. So we remember what it is that we need, or we have key critical information. If there's a confirmation number, if there's, um, if there's something specific, if it starts at 514 and not 515, again, adding it details is helpful. Making titles searchable is also helpful. If you know that you're always, if you know, for example, I, for my client calls, I start them all with connect. The word connect is always in the title. So I can search for things. I also add my client's names. You can search for your information based on what you add in your title. Also adding notes. We know that the calendar time has great space. Add event details, links, attachments, anything like that. If you know that you're signing up for an educational event, and you get a link with um, in an email, I would add that link to the calendar. So you, again, you're only having to look at it on the day of the event. You don't have to go through and search for the link. Although it's fun, it's not necessarily something we want to do. The details of the calendar entry are for us, but they help us to be more productive because if we understand and have everything we need for that meeting or as much as possible from that calendar entry, think it's going to take less time and less digging around to find other things. All right. The other reason that I do like doing this is because now, in again, this is specific in Google, Google calendars has insights on the side of their calendar information per day, per month, per week. And this again allows you to see the colors. This is one of my old color schemes. And you can actually get an idea of where you are from work in the day. And then you can even at the bottom, it will allow you to see the people that you've met with. There's valuable insights that you can get from your calendar if you think about it in advance, it helps you just a little bit more. So we've talked about the information we're going to put in there in our um, calendar entry. We've talked about um, where. 
let's talk a little bit about when and the habits that we are going to build. So let's move from calendar basics to time management, essential time management tips. So when it comes to the who, what, when, where, why basics of calendaring, we know that that is specific to calendaring. The when, it's time management, baby. When, is, when are we going to build our time management habits? The first thing that I suggest to people is when will you review it? Is you need to decide, are you going to review your calendar daily, weekly, or monthly? And to be honest, you might have activities that you review daily, weekly, and monthly. It's important that you identify when you're going to schedule your time management reviews, and then you schedule that time on your calendar. I've had multiple clients who say, oh, I always love to do my time management, my re weekly reviews on Sundays. And then when we look at their calendar, they're never there. And so I ask, and do you ever show up? And the answer is generally no. It's important if we want to do it that we add it to our calendar. We can also then start to schedule blocks when our work schedule, our work availability, if we have any, um, if we have any specific projects or things or blocks that we need to, again, scheduling that time on your calendar. Another important element of time management is identifying and adding time blocks. For example, do you have an admin day? I have something called nope time. That's when, nope, I'm not doing anything, nothing, nope time. Networking time, time to meet. What are some of the blocks that you need to plan for within your calendar? What are some of the blocks of time that you know you're going to need to focus on things? When it comes to time, there is one thing I always like to remind people. We have 24 hours in a day. We have 168 hours in a week. There is no changing that. There is no Botox for time. We can't expand or anything like that. We have 24 hours in a day. So our goal with time management is to decide what are we going to do with this 24 hours and what are we going to do with the 168 hours of this week? Setting time expectations is another important part of time management. This is when you're going to remember, we have 168 hours in a week. How do I want to spend them? We know we need to do things like sleep and eat and take care of ourselves and spend time with our families. So it's important to identify, are we spending time in all of the areas that we want? When we're looking at evaluating our past time, we want to, again, review those time insights. Now, so many calendaring systems have great information included. Use it. Look at it. When looking at calendar insights in history, I always say don't just look at a week or two, look at a month or two, or look at the time of year, because we can get into a small rut for a week or two, but we want to take a little bit of a more panoramic view to see what's going on in the bigger picture. We want to set expectations for how many hours a week we want for our time buckets. So if we identify our time buckets, again, Time that I do yoga, time that I take care of myself. I want to spend time in each of, I need to spend time at work. I need to spend time learning. If we identify our time buckets, then we can start to ex set expectations for how many hours a week we want to spend in those buckets. Remember, it is life and we have to be flexible and adjustable. When we're talking about time management, you can set your schedule and then five minutes later, chances are there might be some changes to it. We need to be flexible and adaptable. And most important, we need to be kind to ourselves when we're planning our lives because we can have, we can turn to a pretty cranky place pretty easy. I don't know about you, but I know I can. And that's when I have to remember, I need to be kind to myself because I'm doing a lot and I'm working on it. And again, I'm being intentional with my time management expectations, my habits. As we've talked about this productivity core four boost. Talking about our calendaring and time management expectations is important for us to be able to identify how we approach, how we spend our days, how we track how we spend our days, how we plan for how we spend our days. Whether we plan it, track it, or approach it, it's all about being intentional and it's all our choice. When it comes to time management, when it comes to calendar preferences, it's important to take control and to be intentional to manage our time. The difference between who you are and who you want to be is what you do. A quote by Charles Duhigg, who has written very several great books that talks about processes and time management.
The difference between who you are and who you want to be is what you do. The importance we're going through talking about these tips and suggestions is to give you ideas so you can say, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. This is the time, effort, and energy I want to spend on it. It's important for us to think, what are you going to do now with this information? Some questions for you to ponder. Again, today, we've looked at the why, the where, the who, the how, the how much, and the when. I gave you information about each of those areas that I think, and I have learned when working with clients, that have been super helpful for helping people take control of their calendaring and time management preferences. So what I've talked to you about, again, your why, your where, what calendar are you going to use? What is that master calendar? How are you going to make your life easier? Is there a link or is there a, a, a setting you can review? What details are going to be helpful for you? I've shared with you my idea. Now it's in time for you to think about your preferences. It's your turn to think about your preferences. My goal to you, my challenge to you, after you're done watching this, or even stop right now and just think for a few minutes. You don't necessarily have to think about all of them if you're feeling overwhelmed. That's not my goal. My goal is to help you take one step and then another step and then another step. And that's going to get you deeper into, again, how is it and what are those calendaring techniques going to do to your time management habits? How can you have the time that you want and spend time the way you want? The reason we're doing all of this is so you spend your day the way that you want to. So that's why today, and again, the second productivity boost core four habit is calendaring and time management. Are you ready to talk about a productivity quick tip now? Let's think about something else for just a moment. This week's productivity quick tip. Have you ever heard of a capture list or a mind dump of your a mind dump to your life? So a capture list is it's exactly that. It's something to capture. What do you do with your pop-up thoughts? When you think about it, we all have a lot of pop-up thoughts. It could be the middle of the night, in the shower, in a meeting, oftentimes at the most inappropriate times, but we won't talk about that. The and the question is, when you get it, what do you do with it? My recommendation and a tool that I have found valuable and many of my clients has is called a capture list. It's a place to identify. It's a place to mind dump and download random thoughts that arise that you are not able to deal with right now. So again, maybe I'm on a client call and I remember, oh, I need to buy that book. Oh, I need to do this. Oh, I need to do this. So what we want to do is if we start, if we have those thoughts in our mind, it's going to be a mind blip, right? We're going to be, oh, I'm going to, oh, that's right. This, oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Our goal is to eliminate that because that's taking our focus away on what we're working on. So a capture list is a place where whenever you have one of those thoughts, you have a list and you write it down. Places you could keep your um, capture list could be the notes app um, on your iPhone or any phone. Um, some people use a paper notebook. A calendar, it could be even be on your calendar. It could be a note card. I have one client that he writes everything on a note card, puts it in his pocket, and he's good to go. But it's that place to identify and document your pop-up thoughts. Because then, when, once we've put our pop-up thoughts on our capture list, we don't have to think about it. Then the next thing, our next quick tip is we want to set up time to review our capture list, right? It's great to put it down, but then we have to do something with it. And so how do we process our capture list? Regular reviewing your process, regular review and process of your list so you can turn your random thoughts into action. You could do it daily, weekly, monthly, whatever works best for you. You might not have a capture list every day. And so it's based on need. Um, I will say when I do have a capture list, I like to review it when I'm ending my day because it's kind of, I know that I'm closed out and that that has a place to go and, and it doesn't have to be in my mind. When I say processing it, what do I mean by that? Where does it go? Is it a task that needs to go on your action list? Is it an email that you send? Whatever it is that needs to happen, you need to take it from your capture list and put it, either do it or put it so that you can assign it in the future. The power of a capture list is that again, you're making an intentional decision that you're not going to let your pop-up thoughts ruin and, and, and rule your day. Your pop-up thoughts are going to have a place to go and you're going to follow up with it. So our productivity quick tip today, your capture list. As we have gone through, 
again, we have talked about our calendaring and our time management basics. We talked about your personalized calendaring preferences. What are the things and actions you're going to take? And then the idea of a capture list. My challenge to you this week, as in every week, is I hope you walked away with at least one action, idea, thought, or something you can take into your life either today, tomorrow, or the next day, the future. My goal is that every time we're together, you learn at least one thing that makes a difference in your productivity. You learn one thing that's going to help you to be intentional. I am so excited that we are halfway done with our Productivity Boost Core 4 series. Again, next week, we are going to talk about priorities. My name is Megan. I am your productivity partner. You can see this show every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern on USA Global Radio and TV. You can find it on our YouTube channel. You can also, if you ever have an idea, suggestion, or thought that you would like to share with me, please feel free to email it to me. You can look at my indelible global website, or you can also, again, watch, like, and subscribe our show on USA Global TV and Radio, where you can also go to our website and learn about other show opportunities and even the possibility of hosting your own show. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Again, I'm Megan. I am your productive, strategic productivity partner, and thank you for spending time talking about today's intentional productivity tips. And now a word from our sponsor. We face daily cyber risks, spending over seven hours of screen time, including 4.5 hours on mobile phones. This convenience comes with significant dangers, with cybercrime costs predicted to exceed $10.5 trillion by 2025. In 2023 alone, seniors lost over $3.4 billion to cybercrime. Our goal is to make social engineering concepts of cybersecurity easier to understand. We work with business teams, senior living facilities, investment companies, and educational institutions, both individually and in groups. We offer real-life examples to help you recognize and prevent attacks, with sessions available both in person, in selected regions, and remotely. Schedule your training session or to learn more, contact us today. Call us at 847-845-9360. Email us at info at cybersecurityeasy.com. Protect your team and family with cybersecurityeasy.com. My name is Dr. Felix Kravitz, and I am the founder of cybersecurityeasy.com, LLC. We live in a world full of vulnerabilities and cyber risks. We spend almost four and a half hours a day on our mobile phones. It's over seven hours of screen time daily when including computer use. We often forget that this convenience comes with risks. Published data predicts that the cost of cybercrime will exceed $10.5 trillion in 2025. These numbers encompass not only businesses, but also each one of us, including our children and our parents. In 2023, the FBI reported over $3.4 billion lost by seniors aged 60 and older. CybersecurityEasy.com LLC's initiative is to massively support the community by providing cyber safety coaching and improving social engineering awareness. Our goal is to make social engineering concepts of cybersecurity easier to understand. We work with business teams, seniors, and educational institutions, both individually and in groups. We cover various topics from phone phishing attacks to AI-generated voice cloning, robocalls, password protection, and more using life examples. Talk to us today. Call us at 847-845-9360 or email us at infozoocybersecurityeasy.com. USA Global TV and Radio proudly presents our partner and sponsor, Mr. Philip Sykes and the British School of Excellence. Building confidence, changing lives. And now, proudly presenting the Polished Professional. On a transformative journey with the British School of Excellence's comprehensive suite of masterclasses, crafted to elevate your professional and personal life. Eight outstanding modules will elevate you to the next level. Module one, exploring life's purpose 
delves into the depths of self-discovery, guiding you to chart your unique path to fulfillment and success. Module two, mastering professional presence and confidence. This masterclass is a deep dive into the art of self-assurance and commanding presence, which is essential for standing out in today's competitive landscape. Module three, Learn the secrets of visual impact, how to curate a personal style that amplifies your professional brand. Module four, mastering professional etiquette and communication excellence, navigating the nuances of corporate interaction with grace and tact. Module five, elegance and eloquence. We impart powerful techniques to captivate and persuade any audience with your oratory skills. Module six, Unlock the potential of your emotional intelligence, EQ, and harness the ability to connect, empathize, and lead with emotional savvy. Module seven, mastering DISC, building a gateway to understanding behavioral styles, fostering better personal and professional relationships. Module eight, mastery and dining etiquette, building your confidence to perfect the subtleties of dining with finesse, enhancing your social savviness at any table. Step into the Polish Professional Program where poise, elegance, and excellence aren't just taught, they're instilled for life. Join us to redefine your potential and polish your professional edge. To learn more, go to thebritishschoolofexcellence.com. The British School of Excellence are investors in people. Let us invest in you. Hello everyone, I'm Simon MacDonald. I live in the West Highlands of Scotland, a very beautiful part of the world. Seems a long way from the USA uh, Global TV station. But remember, USA Global TV is worldwide. It's a fantastic platform. And every Wednesday, I come along here as part of the show, of the United Kingdom News and Culture, and it's it's just like a family reunion each time. Uh, it's, it's one of these amazing stations that has such a beautiful, friendly, and intelligent atmosphere as well. And we reach out to an audience in the most unimaginable places. And I came here, oh, I don't know, must be over a year ago now. Uh, I was introduced by uh, Dr. Philip Chan, and I met uh, Ian Plum Turner and uh, Helena Chard, who uh, are co co presenters on the show. And then Diane Floyd Bem came along as well. And I mean, you know, the the five of us, Dr. Jacqueline, of course, who uh, you know, who is our our host and uh, our mentor, uh, has just made this show work so well. Tremendous people, lovely time we have, and we impart a lot of information and lots of knowledge nothing's rehearsed it's all done off the cuff and it all just gels and we get great feedback from people coming back and saying how they're enjoying the show uh you know it's lovely to hear and it's lovely to get that internet interaction from from outside as well and we're all listeners and some of us are elevated listeners as well so we enjoy every second of it and we hope you do too <laughs> 